the Lawbirds. That's our word brought to you by, I guess, Hazelton Farms. <laughs> I'll let you plug it later. Uh, and yeah. we're here with Nick Hazelton. I'm Jim Jesus. What's going on, man? Not much. How you doing? Um, doing well. Cool. Yeah, it's been a while. I haven't, I haven't been on the Lawbirds before. I've been busy, which is good for me. Yeah, except for, I think, Seamus <laughs> yeah. and Lisa. I think, like, you you were like the highest on the priority list besides those two yeah so yeah i have like a little priority list and and i i just recently posted a thing in the, in our little secret group uh for just co-hosts and where i was like okay here's there was a last time all the people were on and so that the reverse is the priority list i saw i was wondering like I, I didn't I like I saw it and maybe I didn't read your caption and I was like what does this mean but uh, now I get yeah, I see what you mean yeah I'll drag anybody on and I'll post you know after I record a show and release it I'm like all right who's next mm-hmm. and if someone says like oh I'll do it next but you know if Seamus was like hey I have 10 minutes you know I have like I can have an hour tomorrow let's record I'll be like, all right, sorry, all the other people who said they wanted to do a show. He's he's got the highest priority. Sure, <laughs> sure. So, and I've, he hasn't done a show since March. I thought he hadn't done oh, a show man. in like a year, but I was not, apparently no, he did one in in March. So, I really like Seamus. He's he's probably my favorite of us. He's your favorite of us. Yeah, I would say <laughs> out of the Bulbert's Glo- co-host, I think he's my favorite to listen to. Yeah. He's interesting. Uh, we he he just did a, a Patreon hangout on his Patreon. If I don't know if you're a Patreon of his, a patron of no, his. No. no. Okay. Oh, by the way, get on Axis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be doing that a lot. <laughs> we're, gonna be, we're gonna be relearning you how to how to spoke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he, uh, on his Patreon, every every so often when he has like a moment of time, he'll be able to do like a Google hangout with all of his patrons. And so we were talking for a little bit. Oh, cool. And uh, yeah, that was kind of interesting. And uh, he was he was he he brought up this one thing. <laughs> we should probably talk about that for a second. Um, mm-hmm. Where he was saying like, yeah, I can, I can see where you you know you can't have open borders when you have a welfare state. And I was like, why not? And he's like, well, mm-hmm. it's going to put a heavy burden on the welfare state. And I was like, what's the problem with that? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and he was like, well, you know, if 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 they start running out of money. You're like they're going to start increasing taxes. I was like, but I have Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, okay, okay, I guess. And I was like, I really don't care if the welfare state falls apart. That'd be yeah. that'd be a s- progress. If it starts uh-huh. to become so burdensome, the state has two options. They can either raise taxes or go like, we need to rethink this. You know, like we're gonna we're gonna hit that wall soon with Social Security. No matter mm-hmm. how much we raise taxes, no matter how many immigrants we kick out, like Social Security is gonna. It's going to be a disaster because all the baby boomers are retiring. In fact, like my parents are like, we're just waiting for your mom to turn this or like whatever age, you know, because he's like two years older or something. Mm. So so we're just waiting for your mom to turn the age and then we're retiring. Yeah. And it's like, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's weird. It's it's. It's, it's pretty um I, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty much counting that social security will not be oh, there yeah. and uh and yeah I'm I'm <laughs> I'm investing in in crypto and and uh my, pa- my parents are, are calculating their retirement as if social security is not a guarantee. They're like it's coming mm-hmm. in. We'll take it cuz we've been paying into it our whole lives. Might as well take what they stole from right. us. Yeah. But we're expecting it to go away. So they're probably just going to use it for vacation money. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah I, I've, uh, I don't know the open borders thing. It's, I, it just, it does not, it does not make any sense to me. I, especially with the welfare state argument, because it, it just, uh, and then it's the thing is like the, I, I don't know how many, how much of this is true. Like how many immigrants do come from other countries and end up on the dole. I'm not sure. Um, but I guess I could look into the statistics myself, but yeah. it doesn't seem like it's that much to me. And, uh, and I'm, I don't know, I guess I don't know. Cause I don't know that many immigrants. Um, most of my friends are white. And if, and if they are confirmed, you know, all right, I knew it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some of them, you know, I do, or like some of my friends might be on food stamps and stuff, but it's, I don't see very many, um, Immigrant families. It seems like most of the immigrants, especially the the Hispanics, that's who, who we have here. Um, they're doing all the farm work, 
um, that the, you know that the that the white kids won't do anymore because because they all want uh, a uh, a retail job because they've got pretty pretty hands and they can't work hard. <laughs> I got pretty so I hands. Know. That's right. Well, so I don't. I, sure I don't got pretty hands. <laughs> I don't think that the it's. I don't. I wonder. I guess I could look into it because I've never looked into it. What yeah. what the statistics are, but it doesn't seem to me that that's realistic. Of a that's not a realistic fear. Yeah, I know they have like laws that prevent certain immigrants from being able to access certain you know programs. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't know how effective they are, <laughs> or if they're they're able to find loopholes and stuff like that. And last time I checked, like they they actually do take some things. Um, mm-hmm. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure if they take, cause there's a bunch of different programs. It's not just sure. food stamps. There's, you know, social security, disability, there's WIC, there's, um, section eight, all, all sorts of different kinds of like of those programs. So I don't know which ones they're taking, which ones are eligible, eligible for, if they're able to take certain other ones. Also the fact that those kids go to school and that's a big drain as well, but that's, that's more that's more on the the local level than it is on the on the the federal. I mean, the federal does pay for. I think they they subsidize, but the federal government pays for some schooling projects. I'm sure, right? For the most part, that's on the fed, uh, local. But yeah, um, I don't remember what what it was, but it's been so long ago. But the way I look at it is like I I really don't care either way. Yeah. Because there's like two kinds of classes of immigrants. Like a lot of immigrants, probably the the most it, the majority of immigrants that come from countries, you know, not from Mexico. The vast majority of them come here because they want to live in like a free market system. You know, they don't take any sorts of subsidies. That they're, they're kind of like kind of like Ayn, uh, Ayn Rand was. Sure. You know? And you, you, you'll yeah. see a lot of these immigrants, they'll come here like, oh, I came from, you know, my country was a socialist shithole and I came here and I live in America, yay, capitalism. And then you have the ones that want to just come here because there's all sorts of programs. So, I mean, they do exist. I just don't know mm-hmm. what to the extent they cost or what percentage of them are which. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I don't know either, but I'm with you. Either way, I don't, I don't care. It. <laughs> Where the what the government does, I just try to make sure it, you know. I try to limit its effect on me as much as I can. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm not I'm not concerned about immigrants taking welfare as you know any more than I am concerned about white people or, or American citizens taking welfare. Yeah, and there is a wall with how how much the government <laughs> can tax. There, what's what's the rule? The oh. um the, the not the bell curve, but it's the same kind of principle. <laughs> I forget what it's called. <laughs> um. Uh, Jesus, I, I mean, it was in Ferris Bueller for fuck's sake. Um, Does anyone know what George Bush called this in 1980? Something DOO economics, voodoo economics. What the hell was it? Laugh um, curve. There we go. That's the word. Um, I knew that if I said that line, I, I would eventually remember <laughs> everything <laughs> that he was saying. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Laffer curve. Basically, it's it's a it's a theory that's that's. You know, it's well established that it's true, but I know the left likes to go, that's not true. It's been proven wrong. It's like, no, it's been proven wrong by your brand of economic, uh, you know, economics people. Like, what's his name? Um, um, Keynes. No, yeah. Or, well, well no, Keynes, the guy. there's certain Keynesians that, that, that accept it too. I mean, conservatives okay. are Keynesians and they, they accept the laugh for Kirk, oh, okay. but um, ah, Krugman, like Krugman would probably ah, say yeah, that it's Keynes. bullshit. But even still, you would have to say, like, well, what happens if they tax you at 99%? Then they will start making concessions. Like, oh, so you have to acknowledge that there's some kind of curve. The, the debate is whether or not what, what, the, what the curve looks like, I guess. Okay. Um, anyways, so if, if the government's taxing you too much, you're going to start doing things like getting offshore accounts or hiding money under the, you know, taking money under the table or accepting Bitcoin. And I think that if, if you do that too much, you're going to end up just creating black markets like you saw in the USSR when profit was yeah. illegal. <laughs> like, uh-huh. like you could not make a profit legally in the USSR. So people just turned it into black markets. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's already happened in that way. I don't know what federal income tax is at. Um, but, you know, I know that, you know, out of the small amount that I make, they probably take, well, they, they might take altogether uh, 
maybe it's 30 percent of mine yeah. and i don't make a whole lot of money you probably get most um, of that's it like back social security and that would be that would be plus social security and, yeah. and income and, and oregon has an income tax too oh what is your income tax is it is it a lot <laughs> uh it's com- i think it is a lot compared to some other states but i i don't i don't remember what it is i I don't think it's 16. It's between like 10 and 16, I think. So it's a decent amount, you know, um, especially if you add on the federal income tax. <laughs> yeah. Well, Nevada, we don't have a state income tax. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a sales tax? We have a sales tax. It's like 6%, but you guys have none. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, no, 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 no. I think it's eight. Yeah, it's about eight, eight about 8.25 okay. or something. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, I think I think Clark County has its own sales tax too. Oh. I don't know. Um, I don't know what it is. I just go like, here's money. I know you're stealing from me too, government. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Nothing I can do about it. There's right. no there's no black market, you know, Walmart neighborhood grocery <laughs> store. Yeah. Black market tomatoes it, uh, someday. <laughs> in in Washington, they don't have uh, an income tax either, and and uh, I know people who live right across the river from Portland, um, in Vancouver, Washington, and and uh, their scheme is to live over there in Vancouver and then shop in Oregon, uh, so that way they don't have to pay the sales tax or the income tax. Mm-hmm. But yep. you'd have to drive a ways from Vegas to <laughs> to get somewhere without a sales tax. Yeah. Does uh, does Arizona have one too? I think so. Yeah, yeah. We we can yeah. always ask David. He 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 lives in Phoenix or Tucson. I don't remember which one. Yeah. It's all the same to me. Mm-hmm. Desert. Yeah, <laughs> that's where they have a Santa Claus is ripping off malls. That's all I know. <laughs> Saw it in a movie once. <laughs> An actual Christmas movie, unlike Die Hard. Uh, <laughs> That's a different topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen Die Hard in a long time. Yeah. I, I saw Die Hard last year around Christmas time because someone wanted to debate me. Um, oh, yeah. In fact, it's a YouTuber, Richard the Dick Coughlin. I don't know if you're familiar <laughs> with that guy. Um, no. He wanted to debate me on this, and and we ended up setting up this debate, and it never, it never happened. We might be doing it this year. I don't know. We'll see. Um. Sure. He said, like, keep this date free just in case. And I was like, okay. Um, well, so we'll see. Um, but anyways, um, and, I, and I was watching it, and I was like, this is not a Christmas movie. <laughs> like, I've, I've been saying this for years, and it, watching it again, I was, like, really kind of affirmed. Like, yeah, there's Christmas <laughs> things that are happening. Yes, it takes place on Christmas Eve. Yes, there's Christmas decorations. Yes, there's Christmas music. Yes, you know, he makes jokes like, ho, 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 I got a machine gun or something like that. But mm-hmm. but but it's like, but that's it. I mean, you could re, you could do everything else and be like, it's Halloween, everybody's making Halloween stuff, and you could say like a joke like trick or treat, you know, cut my feet, you know, I, <laughs> let me give you some tasty lead to eat, you know. You can make all those kind of jokes, and it would still be the same movie because it, Christmas has no part of the actual like plot or the motivation of the story. And I think in order for it to be a Christmas movie. It has to be about Christmas, and it's doubly so if it's like, or re, you know, the point of the, you know, the the third act, you know, the final act of the film, where it's, you know, you you realize that you know you you succumb to tradition, or you know, the the magic of Christmas saves the day, or a major Christmas miracle happens. But there was no miracle. I mean, sure, he did some crazy things, and he could have died, and he survived, but that's not a mir- a miracle. It's not a Christmas miracle. It's not like. You know, yeah. all these other Christmas miracles you see in movies, like It's a Wonderful Life and White Christmas and Miracle on 34th Street. And besides, it came out in July, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> it's a summer blockbuster movie. It came out in July of 88. Yeah, yeah that's that can't be a, a Christmas movie. I'm yeah. with you. I think it has to be about it, right? It has to be focused yeah. on it. Like the L, like L for what is Yeah, I think it's with... Uh, whatever that health i tried watching that I, i've never seen that <laughs> i tried <laughs> i tried watching it the other day and i was just like bored by it yeah i don't i don't really enjoy it anymore either but yeah. as a kid i loved it <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting idea i still have to say my favorite christmas movie of all time is bad santa 
Bad Santa is my favorite. You have to see it. It's the greatest. Yeah, I've heard and it's, it's really about good. it, you know, it's it's about like, you know, these these uh the Santa Claus and this uh this dwarf who they dress up and go to malls and be the the Santa. But the Santa is like a like a raging alcoholic. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like he he'll he'll like go to work drinking like a bottle of uh you know Granddad. <laughs> 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 and he'll show up drunk and piss himself and pass out and cuss in front of the kids and the kids are like hopping on his lap and they're like oh I want a Nintendo gear and he's like what the fuck is that <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then you know at, at, at Christmas they, they, they break into a safe and take the money and everything but there's a Christmas mm-hmm. miracle not to spoil it well I'm going to spoil it but there's a Christmas miracle that happens because he doesn't give a shit about any, anybody he's taking advantage of like this this retarded kid. I guess he's retarded. I don't know. He's a weirdo. He's taking mm-hmm. advantage of him and his house and his, you know, his everything. And, you know, and it was at, it's like the very last scene. He realizes like he like he really gives a shit about this kid after all. And he gets him a Christmas present. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Sweet ending. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he almost dies trying to give it to him. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's a Christmas movie, damn it. <laughs> That's a damn good Christmas movie. But anyway, I, I think everybody just looks at it and goes, okay, I want. I, I'm, I don't want to watch a Christmas story or It's a Wonderful Life because those are sometimes like too saccharine sweet. You know, I want something mm-hmm. with explosions or, you know, crazy things happening, you know, and Die Hard is one of those. Yeah. But it's not about Christmas. Sorry. No. Yeah. So yeah. So what's going on with your farm other than uh, Thaddeus Russell? Well, maybe we should talk about Thaddeus Russell. <laughs> sure. Yeah, he's an interesting guy. But um, so I, let's start, I'll start up and I'll say a little bit about the. Don't farm. bury the there's lead. Not much, yeah, there's not. <laughs> there's not too much exciting going on because it's um, it's winter time. Everything's just frozen. Um, so uh, yeah, what is what's new? I don't know. I don't think I have anything new since I was last on. I'm um making a little bit more money than I used to, nice. uh, which is, yeah, it's just nice. It's not as much as I did it, it during the summer and at the farmer's market, I guess, but it's making, I'm bringing a little bit in. So yeah, I don't think there's anything exciting going on. I've got some plans for the, uh, for the spring and, and, uh, and I'm, I'm building like a couple, like I'm building a wood shed and then a smoke house. That's what's going on. You're right building now. a smoke house. Yeah. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm so excited. I've got so many pigs, so I, I need to get rid of them. And uh, they're so small that people don't really want to buy them from me. Uh, but I need I need to get rid of pigs because I have so many. Um, so I'm gonna put I'm gonna I'm gonna kill them all and put them in, a, in the smokehouse and uh, and make some really good bacon and some nice ribs. So you're you're gonna smoke bacon? Yeah. Do you yeah. do you cook smoked bacon after you you get it, or is it just one of those things um, you just cut it off and eat it because it's already smoked? It depends. Most of the, the bacon that I get, I have, I just, I, I just cook and eat it because I like the crisp. I like crispy bacon. Mm-hmm. But recently, um, one of my neighbors actually made some, like, it was the best bacon I've ever had. It was fucking candy, dude. Like, the, she made some sort of maple glaze on it and, like, it, it soaked candy. into that bacon. Oh, it was amazing. And I could, I could just, like, just cut. She gave me a big old pound of it, not, not sliced. And uh, I just would slice that off and just eat it raw. Uh, it wasn't raw. I mean, it was oh, yeah, cooked, yeah. but. But yeah, man, uh, that's good stuff. Yeah, there's a uh, a bar near me that I love. I go there whenever I can. But it's a uh, it's it's called the Bacon Bar. In fact, it was on what's that show? Um, bar Rescue. It was okay, on. Yeah. yeah, it was on Bar Rescue. <laughs> it used to be like some you know Joe Schmo's Tavern or whatever. But they came in, rethemed it, and everything. And they specialize in like bacon stuff. There's a lot of like bacon stuff on the menu. And one of the things is called man candy, and it's like maple and brown sugar, you know, glazed oh bacon, and the oh dip, God. and it has like a dipping sauce. It's made out of like a maple syrup reduction with whiskey, oh, Jesus. with Canadian whiskey. I think maybe oh, Crown man. Royal. It's a fucking amazing. Ooh. It shouldn't even be that legal. It's so good. <laughs> it's got to <laughs> yeah, be a law somewhere that bans it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm really excited for it. I. uh I it's I've been making jerky recently and I'm I'm just starting to get to the point where I'm like okay this is good enough for me to um start pimping it and be and trying to uh, sell it a little bit 
but I'm not there yet. Give me, give me like a month and I'll have some jerky. Okay. Um, but, uh, I, uh, I really want that smokehouse because I use a dehydrator to make the jerky and it's great because jerky is just good. If it's got salt and garlic on it, you'll eat all of it. Um, but it doesn't have that smoky flavor in it. And, and I don't think it would, if I, if I have it drying in the smokehouse and, and cure it that way, I think it'll be more tender. Um, cause right now the yak and it would, I, it's just, it just, I dry it all the way out. Maybe if I didn't dry it completely it would be better, but, um, hmm. that smokehouse will, will take it to the next level. Um, you're, you, you, you've seen the show good eats, right? With Alton Brown. Yeah. You yeah. did this episode. I can't remember which, which episode it was, but you did one where he actually made beef jerky. Oh, cool. And he didn't put it in a dehydrator. And he, he said, like, don't use a dehydrator because what you're doing is you're basically slow cooking it because it does reach temperatures yeah. where the meat is cooking. He's mm-hmm. like, you don't want to do that. And what mm-hmm. he did is he took, like, these box fans and he put uh, he bought, like, cheap filters, you know, like air filters for your whatever. Yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting because I, I do that like for a house, fil- like an air filtration system for my house. Like I'll go and buy like a really good air filter and tape it to the side of a box fan and then just run Oh, it. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But he was doing that and he was putting the strips of meat in the grooves and then layering them. He had like mm. three or four layers and then taking it to the box fan and then blowing the air out of the window. And that's how he dehydrated uh, his beef jerky and didn't cook it. Wow. Just dehydrated it that way. Huh. Let the acid cook it, like whatever acids he had in the sauce. Wow. Yeah. Sorry about the phone. It's going to start ringing. My <laughs> sister like just <laughs> left the house. I could hear her shut the door. And then as soon as she shut the door, the phone start ringing. Yep. So she can't answer it. But no, I, I, I've, I've heard of that method, um, I think. And uh, I should try it because I've, I don't, th- how expensive are oil filters? They're like paper. Yeah. Right? You, you can get like the really good ones. You know, they have like, it's a HIPAA filter and it's got, oh, you getting called? Yeah, it's my dad. Um, he, Hello? She's doing, I don't know if I answered or not. I'm not going to get there in time is the thing. Don't, don't worry about it. Do <laughs> you, you need to? He doesn't need it. I don't think he needs anything. Oh, okay. I, he knows I'm making dinner, so whatever well, happens. I'm not editing this good. out. This would be great. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Watch, he's going to call again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <he's been> called. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah, like that's how he was doing it. And I was like, oh, I don't think I've ever had beef jerky. That was usually it's always been a dehydrator or I buy it from a store. And you can totally tell they probably cook those in big, big ovens yeah. at low temperatures and stuff. Yeah. So. Huh. Yeah, I'll have to try that because I, I wanted because I bet it's more tender that way. Mm-hmm. And, but it's way more tender because the cooking does does absolutely uh, change it. Yeah, I wonder if it would smoking it would be any different. Imagine yeah. so. Yeah. Damn, now I'm hungry for beef jerky. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you did you have any uh extraordinary guests come by your uh your <laughs> farm? farm recently? Yeah, I did. Um wow. I, Thaddeus it's Russell like came I by. <laughs> right? It's almost <laughs> if I told you uh, before almost. we started. <laughs> almost. Uh-huh. But uh, if, yeah, if you're not familiar with Thaddeus Russell, he's been on School Sucks project uh, with Brett Minot many times, and uh, he's and he's been on Joe Rogan like three times. That's actually where he's most popular. Um, and and he's, he also he kinda, did a, he did a terrible debate with Stefan Molyneux. It was yeah, I listened to that unlistenable because both of them were being really? really bad debaters. Yeah, it's it didn't I didn't really there wasn't much of a, a debate as it was like a discussion and then like it seemed like Stefan was just confused at what he was saying yeah like yeah. I thought he made sense I, I I agree with Thaddeus on the uh I guess the like I don't know if this is the postmodernist view on objective truth or or you know those those truth value claims mm-hmm. um I definitely agree with with what he says and and he made sense to me in that debate um but yeah, I'd, but he was arguing it f- very poorly, I think. Yeah. But he, like I agree with some of the things that postmodernists say because, you know, I I'm really interested in like f- egoism, and egoism mm-hmm. is like a precursor to like postmodernism. But once they start getting into like deconstruction stuff, I'm just like, ah, I'm off. <laughs> I'm off the yeah. boat. That's where it starts getting a little bit too weird. But like he kept having to explain 
over and over again, like if something falls down, like like Molly kept saying, like, you know, like you just can't defy physics and say that things don't fall down. And he's like, but things don't fall down. Right. <laughs> they fall towards they the center cold. of gravity. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's really a that's a, that was an interesting one. Is all. Yeah. Right. Like that that to me is where you, like people don't understand that cuz words have different meanings for different people, right? Just because you say down doesn't mean it's necessarily down, right? Cuz how like cuz since language is pretty arbitrary, you can define it almost however you'd like. Oh my and, god, yeah. Yeah, if you want to say down is is south as opposed to down is the uh, center of the earth and um you know then that that's where i think that that analogy didn't i didn't like how thaddeus explained that yeah like well, why don't the rivers just fall off the earth but but i don't know i guess it ex- i guess it explains the um it did explain the, the what what stefan was missing there yeah and and molyneux has this this way of debating that's just <laughs> I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm so tired <laughs> of talking about this guy. <laughs> he really, really is irrelevant to to libertarianism anymore. It's kind of pointless Pretty picking much. on it. I think most libertarians now are like, like every time it's almost like every time I see someone post stuff about Molyneux, it's like the like you'll find like five people in that thread going, "Why are we still talking about this guy?" Like, I used to like Molyneux, but he sucks now. It's, it's, it's yeah. like, why do I need to talk about this anymore? <laughs> You know, he's got a whole different audience now. Yeah. A more, a more mainstream audience now. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah good for him, I guess. I'm, yeah. I hope he's, uh, enjoy national. Hope he's doing well. <laughs> yeah. You hope I he's doing know. very well. <laughs> you <mean? laughs> yeah. Really. But that, 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 that debate was just terrible. And it, it, you know, it wasn't completely Molyneux's fault either. You know, no. but I, I, everything else, like I really do like Thaddeus Russell's show. Uh, I just I yeah. was listening just like the other day to um, before I got hooked on this other podcast, which I'm going to the entire library of, which I'll talk about later because it's very important that I don't talk about this publicly <laughs> yet. I will though; it's going to be fun when I do. Um, but anyways, like he he did a show with Scott Horton that was really good, um, and like oh, I haven't heard that. Oh yeah, yeah, it was good, and they got in, they got into some discussions too, like back and forth, <laughs> some disagreements cool. on foreign policy, mostly about Israel. Cool. So that that'll be really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His interview with uh, Angela Keaton was cool. Yeah. Um, I I like his interview style. It's it's very personal. Like, and that's good for some things. Like, um, I don't know, like I don't know. But yeah, he gets he he asks like I don't know. There was just more personal questions. It's not so much about whatever ideas that this person has, but it does come up. And I, I think he's, I think he's doing a pretty good job with that show. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like a certain way that Thaddeus talks that that, like, it, it's just weird to me, and I can't like describe it exactly. But it, he'll say something, and then he'll be like, "Oh, but I didn't mean it that way." Yeah. I mean this way, and I just think it's so funny to me. Like, because he, he did that a couple of times, and I think it's probably um, because he he's a professor and he does a lot right. of like public speaking, and so he yeah. knows he knows what can be taken out of context. So he's always like careful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, maybe that's what it is. Because because to me, I just thought, well, I, I thought it was like a joke, but he didn't. But he did, like I, when I listened to him, I thought, well, maybe it, it is. But it, maybe that's what it is. It's just to be clarifying. Yeah, but uh, I just think it's interesting. I've but been, otherwise, I've been learning I, I do, to do that too. But it's like almost everything I say has been twisted and taken out of context. And like, even when I'm like, okay, let me be clear about this. Okay, I'm not saying this. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is that this particular aspect of it was wrong, and people will still go, "Oh, why? Why do you agree with these crazy like alt writers or feminists or SJWs?" It's like I didn't say that. I'm I'm just saying that this particular aspect. <laughs> Was poorly argued. It's like, but you're agreeing. Like, oh, never mind. Forget it. <laughs> yep. Forget I said yep. anything. Whatever. Yeah. Like I remember. Yeah, so there was this guy, <laughs> and we'll get into Thaddeus in just a bit. I swear. Sure. <laughs> but, no but there was this guy who was like, he heard me talking about how much I didn't like Trump in all mm-hmm. the Lulberts episodes because I'm not a fan of Trump, but I'm. More so, if uh, equally, if not more so, not a fan of Hillary as well. 
And the only thing I was saying was, I don't think he was going to win because everything looked like he wasn't going to win. He was going to lose. I mean, even Trump thought he was going to lose. And so right. I was like, yeah, he's going to lose, whatever. And he was like trying to rail on me like, I'm going to be so, I'm going to laugh in your face so hard when Trump wins and all this other stuff. And I was sitting there like, <laughs> if Trump wins, I'll, I'll be, I'll be like, I'll be, you know, I'll be, this will be interesting. And then Trump actually won. And, and you can go and watch my, there's an eight hour video on my YouTube channel <laughs> where I'm actually like, where we, we started out like right after polls closed, I launched the, the thing and we went through the whole, the whole entire election night. And when Trump won, I was like, I was getting angry with CNN saying, just fucking call it for Trump already. You piece of shit. <laughs> You're just some assholes. Mm -hmm. You know, he hasn't, you know, you know, Hillary has no shot now. Just give it up. <laughs> and then like, we were like, oh man, this is amazing. This is, this is kind of interesting. You know, like I did think it was interesting, but at the same time, it was like, dude, like, but he, he just thought just because I <laughs> talked bad about Trump that therefore right. I must be like, uh, well, I wanted Hillary to win. Okay. Like, I sort of did, but it was only because I knew the kind of evil that Hillary was. So I could expect it. It was predictable where I, I saw Trump as like a wild card. So I didn't know what I was yeah. getting. But yeah. And uh, he, he recently just posted something on there. And he's like, you guys aren't funny. I'm done listening to the show now. It's like, dude, all you've done in the last year is complain. <laughs> you want me to feel bad you're leaving? <laughs> no, Bye. That's great. I'm glad. Yeah. I, don't have to, I don't have to hear your shit anymore. Great. Mm -hmm. Next. <laughs> I'm not There's one of those egotistical. I'm an egoist. I'm not an egotistical jerk that's always like everybody has to think good opinions of me. Like fuck you. I'm gonna say what I want. If you like it, great. Listen. Exactly. If you don't, whatever. I don't even care if you donate. Right. Oh, sorry. It's just, anyway, it's just not the point. Yeah. No. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel you there because I I get so upset with people like that. They're like, oh man, if this happens, I'm like, but I, I didn't. I didn't even argue that point. You just. Like well, for whatever reason, you're attached to that, and you want to make that your your point. Because yeah, maybe you're a little bit right there, but it's like shut up. <laughs> it's not what we're talking about. Obviously, we're not like supporting Trump or supporting Hillary. That's funny. I didn't even support Gary Johnson. I voted for him just right. despite his running mate. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he wanted me to vote for Hillary, and I was like, well, fuck you. I'll vote. For, I'll vote for Johnson then. <laughs> That and also I had Trump people going like, if you're not going to vote for Trump, you're basically voting for Hillary in a swing state. And I was like, if that's going to piss you off, great. And so everybody thought that I was voting <laughs> for it? Hillary. <laughs> everyone thought I was voting for Hillary because I wasn't voting for either of them. <laughs> and I was like, and it was basically like, a, and what it ended up turning out to be was, you know, Trump won. So therefore, didn't my vote actually contribute to it? If I, <laughs> if, you, if you just assume. Right. What is it, Schrodinger's ballot? You don't really know who you voted for if you didn't vote <laughs> until after the election's over. Until after the election's over. <laughs> <laughs> Did I vote for Hillary or Trump by not voting? Let's find out. Like, it's stupid. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's ridiculous. But, uh, but yeah, I had uh, Thaddeus Russell came out. Um, I was I was really excited. It, he, um, be, through Brett Vinat, he's, he's known a little bit about me, and, um, and he lives... Um, in Salem, Oregon, and I, I'm probably an hour south of Salem, and uh, so I, I we've we've had lunch, and uh, and I intended to get him on my podcast, but I had uh, I had forgotten that I had um, already invited him, and then uh, then he I guess he hit me up, and uh, and then um, he's like, hey, this weekend he hit me up, he's like, Nick, let's do a show on Monday. And I'm like, well, sure. And oh, so you're going on out. you're going on unregistered. I was. I was on unregistered uh, yesterday. Oh, snap. yeah. So he interviewed me, and that was really that was really exciting. Um, before I could get him on my show, but um, yeah, that was that was. I was very surprised. I was just like, "Oh shit! Wow, this will be a really big uh, dump of traffic my way." Yep. Um, so I'll, we'll see how popular Yakin with Nick gets. Here. <laughs> it's funny because I don't go on anybody's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> at all but it's like one of my co-hosts is on tom woods you know, like another one's hanging out with hoppa and michael malice all the time it's like what the hell is happening here how come <laughs> right yeah, yeah, we... <laughs> like, i think it's because i talk too much shit you know i've i've been Maybe. kind of moving away from that that's why i was kind of like i don't want to talk mm -hmm. about Molly anymore but i was I've, I've been always kind of been like the whole point of this the whole 
and I, and I keep derailing your conversation, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but I might as well explain it because I haven't yet, and I needed to because this is actually happening for a couple episodes now. Mm-hmm. We're like, the whole point of like the Lulberts, what I wanted to start out doing was to get people to be comfortable criticizing people within their own circles. Because mm-hmm. libertarians for a while were like, you can't say anything bad about Tom Woods. You can't say anything bad about Molyneux. You can't, if you say anything bad about any of these people, like, you're terrible. Like, you you, you aren't really a true libertarian. You can't criticize alongside night. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Otherwise, you're a fad. But I think I think now that I've been doing it, other people have been doing it too. And I think it's caught on. And now people are like are ready to like have major disagreements with like prominent <laughs> members of libertarianism up to including Rothbard. I'm like, okay, I think my work here is done. Mm-hmm. I don't need to focus on this so much now. Yeah. So. I think, you know, this is why I really like you in particular, Jim and the Lulberts because of that. Exactly. I was like, wow, this is a great, I, I, I just like the name because I, I noticed that myself. So I, I, I'm, I think you're right. And I do think that it's, it definitely has improved um, with libertarians, or maybe just these libertarians have kind of left, um, and they're not—they're not really calling themselves libertarians, and, and maybe they're the, you know, the bordertarians or something that yeah. have kind of moved away. But it, I think you're right. I think that more people are—it's—it's—it's it's, it's more about the the individualism than the um, than the non-aggression principle. If that's kind of a—I don't know if that's I don't know if maybe the individualist part is true, but it's definitely less about the NAP and it is more about, yeah. I feel like it's more about intellectual ideas, but that could just be my circles that I'm, I'm throwing myself of, into too. You know, that's, like, I have no problem with people who are like talking about the NAP all the time. Like I have no problem with that. Like I disagree with the NAP and I, I love debating people about it. Um, mm-hmm. Like it, in like in practice, it's almost like I would agree with them on everything. Regarding the NAP, right. it's just like there's a very specific and the language and, and more like it's not so much like the idea or is it as a rule of thumb or that as a starting point to when you're thinking about law. Like that's all fine. But when you're talking about it as an es- ethical philosophy, that's when I'm like, what, what, what? <laughs> no, no, no. Right. That's when I that's when I have it. So I'm just yeah. not a fan of deontology outright. Yeah. Same and, here. I mean, it makes sense. Don't hit people. Because uh, they yeah. might hit you. It's a it's a pretty good rule, rule of thumb. Yeah. Hold that thought. I'm gonna pause it for a second. Okay. I'm gonna stand up real quick. I'm gonna. No, oh, I guess I can't pause it. I gotta. Oh, I'll just edit it out. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. Mm. Yeah. Sorry about that. See, I I won't edit out. Your dad calling, but I will edit out my <laughs> pee break. <laughs> so, yeah. So, where were we? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, like, I, you know, I, I want – that was the whole thing. Like, I was just getting tired of, like, libertarianism becoming, like, a religion where you can't – you're not allowed to criticize the clergy. Yeah. But it seems as though that's that's fine now. Like, it's <clears> – <throat> it's not – it's not – it's – and I wasn't trying to be edgy or a contrarian. It was just like, I think people just need to be like, what's the term I'm looking like a like a shock treatment kind of thing. Like everybody just needs to be like shocked a little bit. Like we need to be able to disagree with everything that we hold sacred. But once right. we get to that point where we can actually have a discussion and not immediately jump to like, well, you just want people, you know, you just you're just disagreeing with the NAP because you want to violate people's you, you want to commit aggression. I'm like, no. Show me where, like, I even would remotely c- want anything that has anything to do with that, like you, your philosophy, where I want to violate any of that. It's just that I disagree with you on like the very specifics of it. That's all, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I find is I'm I'm pretty much an anarcho capitalist when it comes down to the practical things. It's not totally true. But you know, pretty much the, these people, I, I agree with. Um, when it comes to the outcome, I'd like to see a free market. Uh, I'd like to see the end of the state. It's the same things, but yeah, the 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 deontology of like argumentation ethics and um, and the non-aggression principle or, or axiom, it just it doesn't stand up to uh, to rigorous critical thinking. I think. 
And there's there's Lulberts that disagree with me on this. Like people yeah. in, <laughs> on the show that disagree. Like Matt, that guy is like 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 a, a pure Rothbardian in every sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he really truly is, and he disagrees with me on a lot of stuff with that stuff. But you know, he still comes on, and we still have an interesting conversation about stuff. You know, but yeah, like I right. wanted, I wanted to kind of move away from infighting. But it, sure. I wasn't infighting for infighting sake. It's, I wasn't trying to be like a, an LP meeting. Okay, <laughs> it really wasn't. <laughs> what I was there to, what I was trying to do was trying to get people like to just have the discussion. Is this person a good representative of our ideas? Is this the guy we want to put on, you know, on national television and have a show where everybody's listening? Probably not. <laughs> you know, like look at all the bad things he does. Look at all the stupid things he says. You know, this looks, right. this looks terrible and we just need to have yeah. that discussion, you know, and I'm glad that we have, you know, and we've seen a lot of the people who were like big figureheads a while ago, just kind of move to the side or change positions or whatever, or Definitely. allow themselves to be disagreed with. I don't, think, I don't think, I don't think any of like the individual people would be, who <laughs> would have been like, how dare you criticize me? Except for maybe Neil Shulman. Uh, <laughs> but, but most of like, but, but the people who listen to them, like you were not allowed to say anything bad about Jeff Berwick ever. Like <laughs> sure. He's a scam artist, but you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> but, right. Yeah, I'm glad that we can have this. Like, I'm glad that when people post something about Bearwick, there's always like 10 comments on there. Like, this guy's a scam artist. Don't give him your mm-hmm. money. I'm happy about that. That wasn't the case three years ago. Definitely. Yeah. Not. Yeah, I'm with you. And I think it's, I don't know. I, I, it's interesting because I've been, I've been trying to pay attention, and particularly over the past three years to, you know, my small libertarian circle that I'm in, involved in. Which includes you and and uh, many other people, but I've definitely noticed that it's true. We uh, a, a lot of people have moved towards being um, more intellectually honest, is what I see. You know, it's just not as much of the um, because we've talked about confirmation bias and cognitive dissonance so much as libertarians. It, I think some of that was like because because I saw a lot of the time when we were like a lot of people were talking about that is like yeah, that's you are some of the worst people at that. Um, you have some of the worst cognitive dissonance I've seen, but it seems that a lot of people have um, learned more. And um, I, don't, I wonder why that is. Part of it might be that just people have been arguing for a long enough time that they realize, oh right, <laughs> this this whole flame war thing doesn't really spread my ideas, no. <laughs> and I don't really get much out of it. No, um, this, 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 this really show fun. is not about. I guess it sort of is. It's not really so much about reaching out to new people. It really is. Sure. The Lawberts was never that concept. I think it, it, it ended up having that effect because I've disagreed with a lot of major libertarians that I have yeah. like people who are like full on like white nationalists, like not <laughs> not even libertarian brands of it, just full on white nationalists. Listen to me. I have like conservatives. Listen to me. I have liberals. Listen to me. I have communists anarcho communists like you name it like i have a broad range of people who listen to this show because they're like they're one they're wanting to be interested in like all the libertarian dramas of all the people that they hate mm-hmm. and then it's like and then they end up having to listen to things about me arguing talking about argumentation ethics <laughs> and, and right. economics and all this other stuff and there's been a couple people that have contacted me and said like i wasn't a libertarian when, when i listened uh, I have these leanings now. I mean, there's one in particular that I talk to on the regular. Um, sure. Yeah. Who was a full wow. on commie. That's cool. That's full cool. on commie. <laughs> He's not anymore. <laughs> now it's it's almost like, do we even disagree on anything about economics anymore? Probably not. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I don't know. I, I you know, I th- I think the Wilberts is a pretty good introduction. Uh, to, well, I don't know. I, I don't yeah, think I think so. we, I would disagree. <laughs> well, you know, it's not. It wouldn't be the most intellectual. Like, if you really want to learn the non-aggression principle and and economics, maybe not. But yeah, Tom the Woods basics of rally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's maybe a little bit more kind yeah. to that. Um, yeah, but I I do think that it's it, it's entertaining. Like that's what I like about the Wilberts and. And some other shows is, and that's what I've tried to do with Yakut with Nick. To me, anarcho yakutalism wasn't entertaining. It was interesting. I think I had a lot of cool stuff to talk about. 
Well, good. I hope so. I mean, you're a philosophically minded person too. Yeah, but it, like, <laughs> I guess maybe if I wasn't, I probably would be like this is boring. He keeps talking about don <laughs> epistemology, <laughs> epistemology, and the dumb <laughs> ethics. I don't know what all this is. Yeah, I think Sounds that like a most bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think that's Fuck most you, people. James, no, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it, I think that's a the there's a difference between like a very highly intellectual show and uh, and one that's kind of in the middle than a very entertaining show. Like I think that's kind of the why I like Joe Rogan is because he's able to have on all these different people and get them to explain their ideas. You know, like we can criticize Joe Rogan about him flip flopping on political issues because he has one person on the next. You know, it's totally, totally different and agrees with both of them. But I think that he, he does a good job at getting people to explain what they believe in, and, uh, and talk. In a, and he does it – and he makes it entertaining. It doesn't always have to be, you know, his comedian kind of throwing jokes in. But, uh, but just because it's, it has that entertainment value, I think it's easier to learn. Um, so, like, maybe you'll listen to an epistemology episode that I can't say it um, that, that I've made. <laughs> I <ruined it>. Epistemology. <laughs> epistemology. <laughs> epistemology. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> but, but the but it's more entertaining, I think, to listen to uh, the Lulberts, and, and you might not learn as much in depth, but you do learn. Um, more of the basics, I think. That's just I think, my... I, yeah, I usually talk about things topically. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to go into, like, every single aspect and nuance of argumentation ethics and why I disagree with it and what what their position is and have a discussion about this as, you know, for an entire hour with Stephen, uh, Step, Stephen, Stephen Kinsella. I'm not going to do all mm-hmm. that. But I will, like, you know, say, like, yeah... Hoppe has got some great stuff, but this argumentation ethics is stupid. And briefly, here's why. But, anyways, let's go back to, you know, bashing coke hash or something. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of moving away from like, hey, let's just talk crap on coke hash. You know, like I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> like, everybody kind of doesn't like coke hash now. You know, and yeah, yeah. Sure. I just, I I just, are, I just, are there any more famous libertarians to bash? Like, I've pretty much ignore. Um, anybody that that isn't like that I already in the libertarian circle that I don't know already I've pretty much just kind of stopped paying attention yeah I like people who like contribute more like you have people like Roger Paxton who like Baron talked crap on on one of the shows and I was like no you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong Baron you're wrong (laughs) (laughs) but you know like I don't I don't think he mean like in terms of like being a thought leader, he doesn't do that. But what he really does well is talk about like things topically how, through a libertarian perspective, and he does it very concisely, and he does it very. It, it does a good show, and it's it's a great it's a great kind of introduction, and he doesn't wrap himself into it as much, you know, where mm-hmm. where, where a lot of that stuff kind of relies on someone's personality to be of more right. standing. Like we could find out tomorrow, which I guarantee is not true. I can pretty much guarantee it's not true that he like he could be like some, you know, like abusive guy who beats his wife or, you know, cheats on her or whatever. But it wouldn't affect the outcome of the show because he's he's not wrapping him as the center focus. It's usually like, let's talk about these things. It's not about him. Whereas a lot mm-hmm. of people like a lot of libertarians like early on, um, <clears throat> you know, before I started this you know, thing. Um, a lot of people weren't doing that. A lot of people were like, like wrapping themselves, like everything's got to be about me, 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 me. And mm-hmm. what I like, like those are the kind of people that I like that aren't kind of like thought leaders is like people like Roger Paxton or whatever. And then you yeah. have people who actually contribute stuff, you know, you know, like I like Stefan Kinsella. He can be a jerk, mm-hmm. <laughs> but sure. <laughs> but overall, like I like him. I disagree with him on, on some things, but I really like listening to him. He's got a lot to contribute, especially on Definitely. intellectual property. Tom Woods has a lot to contribute, especially on like um, history, not so much economics, but that's why he has Wood uh, Murphy, which I like Murphy too. Like all these yeah. people who like who who are about like the ideas or like you know content creation that's about you know about the ideas. Like I really like that stuff. 
when it starts turning into being like, hey, everybody, look at me. I'm doing some crazy activist stuff. Ooh, look at me. Give me money. That's what I'm like. You got you're you're an asshole. (laughs) (laughs) I really don't like you. (laughs) Yeah. Especially when you when you hear like stories about them, like being abusive to their girlfriends and, you know, Mm -hmm. like groping people or ripping people off in Mexico and all this other stuff. It's just like fucking why do we like allow this this to go on? And not say anything about it. Like you can allow it to go on, but at least like you know, say something like, you know, this guy's a fraud. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But everybody's doing that now. And that was yeah. like I wouldn't say that that's completely on me. I'm sure I had something to do with it. I'm sure maybe yeah. there's bigger people doing that as well. But now that everybody's doing it, it's like I don't see a point in just sitting here talking crap on Kokesh. Everybody does it now. I don't need to talk yeah. crap on Berwick. Everybody does it now. I don't have to disagree with uh, constantly talk about how UPB is trash because everybody else does it now. It's like every every time I hop on and see like one of these gimmicky guys talking about stuff, you'll see people in Facebook threads and Twitter wars and saying like, yeah, I agree with Molyneux on politics, but the guy's a jerk. <laughs> the guy's yeah. an idiot. Like his philosophy is terrible. Yeah. I definitely think you're right. And I think it's, I don't, I wonder where it's come from. And, uh, I don't know. Like, I think uh, the like part of it, libertarians. It seems at least at least the way I was brought into it was was straight through argumentation. Like, we're we're discussing ideas, and that's how I got into it. So I think you know that kind of helps at least this kind of those people who got into these ideas from from the you know let's battle it out with our ideas because this is what matters. It doesn't you know that those people. I wonder if at least they have a, a more of an inclination to kind of get the that um, kind of get like the what is it? I guess just the intellectual honesty of uh, of holding ideas and what it means to actually be factually or philosophically right. Like you don't want to just win the Facebook war. You want to you want to have those ideas be right. At least that was what I was thinking when I was you know, arguing about these ideas as I was becoming more familiar with them. And I think that's helped me be able to kind of step back and and be able to look at all these other people in this movement and treat them as individuals, right? Because that's that's the idea. They're not these great men. Um, They're individuals just like the rest of us. And, uh, you know, it it turns out that a lot of them are just pieces of shit. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But you know what? That's with every single ideology and movement ever there's lots of people that totally. are totally absolutely terrible but i don't yeah. know it seems like i don't like when you get into like it's it's it seems like it's more with like the the maybe i don't know not so much fringe because i see like infighting and even fringe movements like i see like the alt-right always fighting with each other yeah but i mean like if if you get looking the more like like the anarcho-communists the syndicalists and everything it's like like they they all like hold their thought leaders sacrosanct or all their I guess mm-hmm. propagandists like sacrosanct like you you no Chomsky like why are we why are we fighting about you know Mel's Rebel News it's like because he's a fucking dipshit <laughs> like mm-hmm. even a lot of people in their own movement would have to admit like the guy is probably not the not the face that you should throw out there but they still fucking throw him on there with this goofy mohawk. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah. I know. Like, I wonder. What's his name? Cizik. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh. Cizik, whatever. Um, but he's like a Marxist philosopher. Like, he's got some interesting things to say. I disagree with him, but he's, yeah. he's, he's got some interesting things to say. He's like probably like the only Marxist that I could listen to. I, I feel like I know this guy. He's a is he's European, right? Yeah, and he has like a really weird accent, and he's. But it's interesting because, like, if you go to his YouTube channel, like, there's, like, this video where he's – I can't remember what he was talking about. He was talking about watering plants. And he's just, like, hosing (laughs) off the plants. And you can totally tell, like, the flowers are getting fucked up by watering. Yeah. (laughs) Like, that way. And he's doing it like – like, he's he's got, like, a sense of humor and stuff, you know? It's not always – Yeah. just just about the philosophy. I think He's I know a fucking this guy. weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I, I watched a like small short documentary about him and I was like, oh this guy, this guy is uh uh what's uh, eccentric. That's what yeah, I thought a is. little bit. Like He's uh he's very interesting. If this is the guy I'm thinking of, I think it is. 
Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, he's an interesting <laughs> guy, but I mean, I don't know. I've have you ever heard of the the ideological Turing test? No. Okay, so like it was this, there's this video that came out and um, it's talking about the ideological Turing test. It's on the Learn Liberty thing. Make a note of it. Um, okay. And basically, basically the idea is it's it's the way you learn how to, how to argue against somebody else someone else's opinions is if you can actually fool someone who shares those opinions as if you like agreed with them like you can actually have a discuss like if you're if you wanted to debate like american liberalism what you would do is you would try to understand their position so, so well that you could actually talk to someone who's a democrat and they would mm-hmm. they would believe that you are like one of them ideologically. And once you can do that, then you can actually come come to a, a debate and and do well. Right. Because you actually do understand their opinions. It, it's it's a mm-hmm. tur- like kind of like a Turing test. If you can actually fool a human into believing that that the thing that they're talking to is human even though it's a machine, then you can yeah, uh, then you've completed the Turing test. Like your program has completed the Turing test. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I I I pride myself in being pretty good at that. Like I uh, actually wrote a, a newsletter for my Hazelton Farms newsletter about uh, vegans, and uh, that's an, I don't know. I think it's pretty like I I don't like vegans. Like and I've worked on like because like they go after what I like. This is my living, and it kind of have. There's just that emotional reaction because these people are coming at me and saying what I'm doing is is evil and that I'm a terrible person when I'm like, I'm doing this for ethical reasons. Um, but it's interesting. I've been able to like over the years, just, just kind of, I've just gotten used to it. Cause I've talked to so many of them. Like, you know, I've dealt with so many of you, you can't really face my objections, but what I do now is instead of arguing with them, I, I really try to uh, just pay attention to what they're saying. So I follow a couple um, vegans on Instagram and, and on Facebook um, and that's, I think it's, it's really important to be able to do that. And you're right. Most people don't do that. And, uh, definitely people, um, like this is my thing with, with Jordan Peterson about, and, and you've brought this up yeah. about his issues with postmodernism. It's like, well, you're, you're not actually at going after, uh, the, the right things here. You're, you're like, you don't, you don't understand what these people actually believe. Yeah. And you're yeah. going after them on on these issues, on these concerns that you have about their I think he's um, about their beliefs. I, I think he's generally right when he talks about quote unquote postmodernists, but he's not talking about like actual postmodernists. He's talking about like the, the postmodernist Marxist, frauds. Right? No, they're okay. No. So you have like libertarians, right? But then you get like yeah. newly minted libertarians who just discovered it last week and they think they know everything about it because they saw <laughs> a thirty minute video by some jerk ass on YouTube, right? Which I'm on YouTube, so they probably heard it from me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but they've they've heard something from the NAP or something like that, and they think they got life figured out, and then they turn around and talk about it. There's uh-huh. people like that in every kind of philosophical thing. I was I was doing it too when I when I first kind of dabbled into egoism, but I, I I've learned over the years to kind of keep my mouth shut until I actually learn about these things <laughs> before I talk about them a lot. Which is why there's like this new topic that I'm really interested in that I'm not speaking about because I'm not that familiar with it. I haven't even read the book yet, um, which I will. <laughs> but but yeah, like but you know so I, but I mean even still it's like. You have to understand things well before you can, you know, argue with them. And there are people, especially like in the social justice warrior community type people who claim to be postmodernists who really don't understand what what it is. And the people who are like the thought leaders of that movement would disagree with the people who are using that as as their their use. But anyways, yeah, that's that's basically that's why I disagree with Jordan Peterson for the most part. This is, he, yeah, he, he's that arguing, makes sense. Yeah, he's arguing it's a straw man of things that people actually do believe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's interesting. I, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm like, I'm saying this that he doesn't understand postmodernism. I don't understand. <laughs> um, I, I, from what I've heard, I agree with some of those those positions. But yeah, I, that's you have to be careful. I've realized that as I've getting as I'm getting older too, like. Like I've changed my mind so many times, and uh, 
And I have to, I just have to watch how excited I get after I find something new. Like my most recent one has been um, Terrence McKenna. Um, I've been, mm. I, I've been getting into psychedelics with Terrence McKenna, and that's that's a, you know, that that could take you down a pretty crazy rabbit hole. Yeah. And then what I realized after listening to like three hours of being like, oh, this sounds so interesting, and exciting. I like thought it back. I'm like, oh, what did I actually learn? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, there's just, there just wasn't, there wasn't anything there. He just, uh, <laughs> like, right. but it was man, interesting. The reason why humans have intelligent mans because they eat mushrooms, bro. <laughs> right, a lot of that stuff eat. is like, I am not because I was like, I'm gonna wait until you hear until I hear what you actually say <laughs> before, uh-huh. before I talk about terrorists. <laughs> I really oh, you, oh, not, I'm not a fan of drug mysticism at all. Yeah, it's <laughs> not at all. <laughs> it's interesting because because I've I've been experimenting with with psilocybin mushrooms particularly, um, and I've I've had a couple like experiences that I'm like, whoa, what the what the fuck to happen? Like you get the the feeling of enlightenment, like that feeling, like you figured it all out. Yeah, uh, that's a weird feeling, and 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 like when you first feel it, like. At least I believed it, and so then I, you know, immediately I'm like looking into this guy who who told me like this would happen if you took psilocybin mushrooms, and this, you know, and uh, I got really excited about it. But I, I think that glowing there experiences, are experiences. I think you're talking about right. What's that? Glowing revelations and glowing experiences. Yeah, I think that's what they call them. Yeah. Yeah, and it was and it was very interesting. Like I I saw the. Uh, I guess the white light, um, if you would, and and like, and it felt like God's uh, <laughs> appearance. But then you, you know, after uh, even the you know the next day, even it's like, well, did that happen? And uh, it's an interesting question. And I like I'm, it's it's hard for me to say because I come from this kind of rationalist perspective of like I need to be able to explain something for me to believe it. But it, and I don't, I don't know where I stand right now. I'm just like, hey, it was an interesting experience, and I learned something um, about myself, and I learned some, int- you know, it's. I think it, these are tools for therapy, but the exploration of of reality using psychedelics, oh, that's, you know, I, that's a little, I, I find that harder to believe. Yeah, um, but I definitely bought into it, you know, for for a good week <laughs> because I was just so excited about it. And then I just kind of came back and around. I'm like, oh yeah, wait, you know wh- what? What am I getting out of this? Because it doesn't, it doesn't really. Um, it's hard to take that glowing experience of seeing the white light and experiencing God and, and like bring it to the make it applicable to this this my consciousness right like the the regular life i guess yeah um i I, i've i've done quite a bit of mushrooms i think (laughs) i think mushrooms are my favorite like acid's really fun too like everybody keeps saying like you got to do dmt i'm like okay well as soon as i find some i'll do it (laughs) Mm -hmm. i haven't found Mm -hmm. any well i had an opportunity to do it at jack fest but i was like I don't want to do it in some weird, unfamiliar place where I'm camping right. in the middle of the woods with a bunch of strangers and like one person I know. No. Sure, I'm gonna wait. Yeah, until, no. <laughs> I'm gonna wait until I do it in a much more comfortable situation. I'll pass. But I haven't got an opportunity to do it other than that. Um, but anyways, yeah, like like there's been like times where I'll where like I'll be thinking about things, just you know, tripping balls. And then like a little like something will just like I'll be thinking about it, and then it's like, oh my god, I figured this out. This is so mm-hmm. amazing. I've never thought of it that way before. Oh my! And I there was there was the last time that it happened. I, I can't remember what it was <laughs> for the life of me. I, I I think I've talked about it in, in an episode before, but I was like, oh my yeah. god, this makes so much sense. And then like it wasn't until like the next day. Where I actually thought about it and I remembered it and I was like, oh my God. I was like, let me think about this. And I was like, you know what? That's something I've always known forever. <laughs> I just worded it slightly <laughs> differently. Sure. It's nothing that amazing. And, and, and like when you're tripping, your mind kind of takes things that you already know and makes it like 
like and br- makes you and tricks your mind into thinking this is brand new and it's enlightening, but it's like no, it's just trivial shit <laughs> like, that I've already known for a while, you know. Yeah, I think I think I, that's like like because I'll I'll hear people talking about like some of their glowing experiences when they're tripping, and I'm like, dude, that's sometimes I'll be like, that's the dumbest shit I ever fucking heard in my life, <laughs> <laughs> or anywhere from that to like, duh. You just now figured this out. <laughs> like I haven't heard anybody like tell me something groundbreaking ever before. You know, yeah. From uh, their from their trips, it's you. It, and if it is, it's usually something like introspective for them. You know, it's something that yeah. they figured out in their lives. You know, like I've, mm-hmm. had, I've had experiences. Like so, that's like one good thing I will say about quote unquote drug mysticism. Like, there's been things that like, like I've tripped. And then, like, I realized that, like, I've been, like, interacting with people in the wrong way. Maybe I should start saying doing this thing instead of that. And, like, it just – what it allowed me to do is not, like, look at it through my perspective, but to, to imagine, mm-hmm. like, others' perspectives all around. It had me do that. And I was like, that's kind yeah. of interesting. I never thought of that before. But it's never been like, oh, man, I figured it out. The universe is a fucking egg or some, you know, <laughs> something that you hear from Bill Hicks or something. I can't stand Bill Hicks, by the way. <laughs> but it's never been something like that, you know, <laughs> that's made sense yeah. in the end. The door is ajar. I'm right. sorry. Am I like, the only person that doesn't like Bill Hicks? I don't. I, Bill Hicks is a comedian, right? Yeah. Am I like the only person I, that doesn't think he's funny? Okay, I don't, I don't think know. I've heard I've heard enough. Yeah, I don't know. I think I don't everybody know. I've talked to says like, Bill Hicks is hilarious, and I'm like watching it like nothing. <laughs> like Car- Carlin, I, I, I found yeah, Carlin's funny. I used to find hilarious. Now I don't because I've just heard it so many times, and I've heard all these nutbags quote him. It's just it's to the point now. It's sure. like I'm tired of hearing of the guy, but. It was good when I first heard it. <laughs> it was good when I was listening to it. And I'm sure if there's some someone that I haven't heard yet, some one that he did that I haven't heard yet, I'm sure it's great. Yeah. Um, I'm not bashing him. I just I've heard it too much, you know. So it's like, sure. you know, it's like when your sister, you know, gets a new song that you like and you, she listens to it all the time, <laughs> and she just like, loops the it. same two fucking songs over and over again. Yeah. Now you hate those songs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's like that. Yeah. One of the things, let's go, I want to ask you a little bit more about drug mysticism because this is where, like, I, I'm with you. Like, I think in terms of introspective things, like understanding your own psyche, like, in my experience, like, what the, what I, the main thing I get out of mushrooms is a deeper appreciation of the world and the people around me. And you know, I don't know exactly what's happening there, but it, in a, depending on like how much you do and like how how you know what your environment is too, um, there can be a lot of situations that you can learn about yourself because you're perhaps dealing with uh, something difficult, right? Like the first few times I did mushrooms was just not very fun, mm-hmm. um, but I really, yeah, like it, it started out ever- fun. I don't think I've ever had a bad ex- no al- almost had a bad experience once with LSD, <laughs> almost. But I I, I kind of knew what was happening. I knew that it was like the the beginning stages of a bad trip from what I've read from Irowid, and I was like, ah, I got to get away from the situation and go watch some TV. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, go ahead. sorry. Well, well, so the first time I did it, I didn't. I just didn't know what I was doing. Like I I've researched mushrooms and I know quite a bit about them. Um, but I just did never never done it, and uh, and yeah, I just I. It just kind of shattered everything I believed in <laughs> and just just like I thought about like everything in the world that I cared about. And just for whatever reason, that night, it did not matter. All of it was dumb. All of it was terrible. And I was just like, wow, life sucks. And uh, <laughs> my existence is pain. And that's all it'll ever be. And then, you know, I, and that's how you got nihilism, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> That would be that would be funny. Yeah, remember those but, uh, five weeks when we were both nihilists? That was fun. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, those are the days. That was my favorite thing about nihilism was the uh, the culture of trolling. Like that was just so fun. Oh, I still oh non aggression principle. Like nobody had like nobody had because at the time all these like newly minted libertarians <laughs> hadn't heard of like any like other idea, and so I like I got onto the next step. Was like oh. <laughs> 
ethics doesn't exist either. Um, <laughs> now let's just troll the fuck out of these people. Anyways, really about mushrooms. <laughs> right, right. Um, so, but but after like it was a very weird experience and it was you know it was terrible, right? But afterwards, I was like, oh wow, that wasn't real. Awesome, life actually does go on and it isn't pain, and my existence uh, is actually pretty nice. And I just was left with that. Um, just I just wanted to like it woke up at two in the morning um, after trying to fall asleep, just having a nightmare. Uh, I just felt like going around and hugging everybody I knew. I just <laughs> I just wanted to go find them, but uh, but otherwise, like there's like a couple experiences where I just I just didn't know how to deal with the uh, the negativity that wherever that came from it must have i think it was must have been me um because i i don't know I, it doesn't happen um anymore when i do mushrooms but i do still get that uh it it feels like i'm like you said i'm able to look at things from a different perspective than my own so i'm not as clouded by um the, the emotional baggage or my biases that i have yeah you know? those are the main things i get but and and I'm still interested in like Terrence McKenna's five gram higher doses. Like, have you heard of this guy named Kalindi E. Yi? He's just big black dude who does uh does like thirty gram doses. Oh shit! And he he just he talks about traveling through hyperspace and doing psychedelics in the next dimension to go to the next dimension to go to the next. <laughs> and it's like, what are you talking about? Wow. Look, but like. He, I used I used to have really good cheap access to mushrooms. I'm not going to say how, uh, but <laughs> I really did. And it was like I started out when I, you know, when I first started getting back into it again after I think the last time I did it was like high school years. That sort of mm-hmm. it's been a while. And then I was like, okay, I'll do like one point seven grams, and I'd weigh it out on a little digital scale, like one point seven. Mm-hmm. Okay, we did one point seven. Let's let's do two. Let's do two point three. And then I was like, okay, I'm liking this dose. Maybe we should up it like one. And I would just up it like 0.1. One. Mm-hmm. And to, I got to the point where I wasn't even at an eighth before I kind of tippered off and I haven't done it as much. I haven't done it in like a couple of years. And I was, so yeah. I haven't gotten up to the eighth level yet. Five grams seems insane to me. <laughs> The 30 grams, what, 30 grams, that's when you like, that's when you transcend into like the eighth dimension, <laughs> you yeah. know, and you're like tesseracts, that ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Right. So, it's, and he, uh, but what's interesting is like, he, he's claiming, you know, this, it, like, I don't know, like to me, what's interesting is like these psychedelics, they, they, like the feelings you get make it seem like that is like what you see is real. Like that's how I feel at least. Like when I've done salvia, like each time I do it, like I get thrown across several dimensions and it's a very weird experience. Is that still a thing? I've been trying Baron. to get a oh sorry to distract. No, that's fine. But Baron wanted me to time. record a video of him doing salvia and we looked all <laughs> around and we cannot find this stuff anywhere. You ever smoke really? shop? Yeah, I, I remember going to a smoke shop and I was like, some. do you know where I can find salvia? And they'd be like yeah, we don't have that anymore. I, maybe it's, yeah. uh, maybe because I'm not calling it potpourri or something. I don't know, but I I just can't find that shit anywhere. That yeah, shit's I've, nuts. I've it, nuts. I've only been able to find it once. It is crazy. It's it's insane. I've got a couple. I've actually, if you if you um subs, if you become my Patreon, <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash Just Yakin, uh, you can see you can find a video of me doing salvia. Oh snap. Um, yeah, it's. I'll send it to you, Jim. But uh, oh, dude, maybe maybe that's what I funny. need to get more patrons. It's like subscribe today, you can see me taking <laughs> a thirty gram dose, <laughs> and, and I'll tell you exactly what hours. it looks like to look at a tesseract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I? Is that is that the right thing? The tesseract is that what it's supposed I to be? I think so. The four dimensional shape that we have only seen like the shadow of. Yeah, is it? It's like the. Um, like, it looks like know. a I don't cube in exactly a cube. Tesseract. Yeah, yeah, that thing. Yeah, that's it, tesseract. Okay, I'm saying it right. Yeah. So let me, I wanted to ask you this: like, what do you think about like? Do you think that these are portals to be able to see alternative dimensions, no. or are you just like I'm agnostic on it? I don't. No. It I'm just saying that you're going to prove that. How no. do you prove it? Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like I've, I've heard. You have to, 
I've read experiences from people who have taken like really high doses of you know uh, of mushrooms. I've read or uh, heard people talk about DMT experiences, and they talk about like how they've seen things, and it's hard for them to explain. But it sort of sounds like they're talking about like seeing like something as if they could visualize another dimension outside of the three that we're familiar with. And so that's what it sounds like. It's probably all bullshit, but, sure. <laughs> but that's what it sounds like. Like I, I can, okay. So I can see like the introspection part, like, cause I've, I've used it for that. Like there was, mm-hmm. there was a friend of mine who passed away a couple of years ago and he was maybe 26. I think that's when he, how old he wow. was when he died. Like he was young. Like I grew up, yeah. He grew up like we grew up in the same neighborhood. It was like his mother was basically like my second mother. Mm-hmm. Like I pretty much I called her mom. Like that's that's how close I was to this family. So I grew up with him. Like I, I remember him like hanging out with his brother and going like, oh, yeah, your dorky little brother or whatever. And, um, <laughs> you know, he passed away like really early, died in a car crash. And like mm-hmm. it was just something that I couldn't like I I, I didn't feel sad. And the reason why I didn't feel sad is because like my like I was there was a big part of like denial. Like he's not really fucking dead. He just fucking right. contacted me on my birthday like 2 days ago. You know. Like that's sure. how like he he died 2 days after he sent me a text message wishing me a happy birthday. Like it was that So there was yeah, there was some there was just it was just wasn't able to click and it was like a month later and I still like was still thinking in terms of, oh, maybe I should hit up Steve and see how he's doing. Mm-hmm. But it was like, okay, I got to do something about this. Because I went to the funeral and everything, nothing, nothing. Didn't feel like, uh, and it wasn't because I didn't care about him. It was just, you know, denial. And so I, I tripped and was trying to, on, on shrooms, and I was trying to initiate like a bad trip in order for me to like really come to grips with the fact that he died. And it happened, mm-hmm. and it was really, it was really kind of relieving for me, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I think that there's definitely that application does make sense, but I'm, I'm becoming, or not becoming, I'm, I am skeptical of beyond that. Yeah. But yeah, I think it, I don't know. I that's where I'm, I'm finding, I'm like, I've been doing microdoses sometimes, and uh, like just, you know, just I don't know how. I don't really have a scale. I do it by cap. Um, you know, I probably eat five certain. It's a uh, okay. It's Semel and Cheetah Liberty Cap, so they're really small. So it's easier to like do a microdose with them because mm-hmm. you don't have to really weigh it out. You can just count the tiny little caps. Yeah. Um, and so I eat like a few in a day, and it's I find that to be like it, it calms me down and it focuses me very well. And then as you get into the, uh, you know, you, you up that dosage, it definitely get a. Uh, it, it's just, it's a it's a weird way of thinking. And I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it, but I, I do find it very useful for, um, you know, if I'm, I, I guess I haven't really used it like that. Um, but what, but what do you usually do when you, when you do it? Like what, what's um, your, what's like your favorite way of enjoying with it with friends? It's usually what we, like I've got a couple of buddies that'll do it with me. So we'll drink, we'll make tea and then we'll, um, Oh, you do tea. We, but yeah. We, um, I don't like throwing up. And I typically, and I still throw up on tea, but really, um, yeah. Let me let me let me bit. help you out bad. a bit because uh, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if you heard me like heard do the like, anarcho. Did, did you hear me on the anarcho uh, the anarcho uh, and cat barbershop? Uh, yeah, yeah. So like we were talking about it ahead of time, and I was like, "Hey, what what drug are you guys doing?" Warning for, it? and he was like, "Oh, we didn't have one this week." And I was like, "Really? Like you guys were like on this shit for like a while? Like you guys did nothing?" And he's like, "Yeah, we didn't do our homework." And I was like, "Well, I know a shitload about mushrooms." So and I was like, "Okay, everything that you heard me say was just off the top of my head, just all the shit that I knew." Like, and that was there was a lot of information I was yeah, trying to compact definitely. in that little time frame. I don't. I think they ran out of music. Actually, <laughs> that was still fucking going on. But yeah. Um. So, like, I I have that trouble too. I, I never had nausea, like actual throwing up, but I've felt nausea. Uh, what I found, what I found work because I hate the flavor. The flavor is so repulsive to me. It's pretty fucking gross. <laughs> it's so. Uh, I. It's to the point where, like I would give my friend mushrooms. And he'd he'd be like, um, 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 and I'm like, and I would gag like, 
Mm-hmm. Ugh, just knowing what it tastes like in him, like he's like, oh yeah, I love the flavor. It doesn't bother me at all. I'm like, ugh, ugh. no, I have to eat it with chocolate. Like I have to like make a little mm-hmm. mushroom sandwich out of Hershey bars. Otherwise, I'll puke. It's just terrible. Like I don't know, chocolate okay. for some reason completely hides the flavor for me. Completely, I don't taste okay. it, anything. But anyways, I've you- heard other people talk about chocolate being a re- like they um, grind it up and actually, I know, I know people who put it into yeah. candy bars. Yeah, for people. Yeah, I know people who are like dip it in chocolate and have like a little chocolate mushroom, like a <laughs> chocolate covered mushroom. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so, but so you don't get nauseous doing that? No. What I what I do is I found out if you eat something like creamy or drink something creamy, like maybe milk wouldn't be enough, but like um, like I would get like the International Delights coffee creamers. Sure. I I usually drink my coffee black, but I would get those and then like make. Like coffee and make it really creamy, really dark and really creamy, mm-hmm. and then that would, that would get rid of it. Or I'd have um, a can of like mushroom soup, yeah, or something cream, like something creamy. You know, milk. I don't okay. know if it would work, but and it just gets rid of that. It's no problem. All right, I'll try that next time. Because yeah. I don't like it. I hate the the feeling of about to throw up. That's the worst part. Like as soon as you th- I throw up, it's ah, it's fine. I don't like. Yeah. I, I feel way better, but. That's like the most that that kind of build up as it's coming on. It's like, and I just start getting nervous. But it feels nervous. But I think it's just that I don't know. Maybe it's me having nerves, or it could be that I'm really nauseous. But I think it's the nausea. Yeah. Because as soon as I throw up, I feel fine, and it's awesome. And and the last few times, I've probably done it four or five times since I've I've had a bad trip, and it's been it's been positive. Yeah. Each time it's just fun. I've never had a bad trip for mushrooms except for that one time where I was trying to instigate it. But I think I think it's because of the way I do it. Yeah. I don't I mean I've hung out with Baron shrooming and and frying. Um but for me it just I I'm just it's just it's not that fun. Like when when I shroom, like what I do is I'll watch like a cartoon. Um or some some sort of thing where I know it's like there's a lot of visual aspects that I want to capture. Like I'll watch like a Tim Burton movie or something. But it's it's usually like I'm trying to find an art style that I like. And I'll even watch shows that I downright don't like or hate. Like I watched My Little Pony once. But it's just to get that art style like visualized fresh in my mind. And so I'll watch like 30 minutes of a show or a movie that I like the style of like Beetlejuice or whatever. And then, and then I'll take it. And then I'll keep watching it until like I feel it start to kick in, and then I'll go mm-hmm. take a really hot shower, and wait until I start peaking, and I'll be in the mm-hmm. shower peaking, and then you know I'll dry off, you know, hump in bed and just lay there with headphones on and just listen to music for like three hours until I'm done peaking. Wow! And music feels fucking amazing. If oh, you yeah. listen to the certain, you probably can't. You know you like hip hop. I understand this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's probably not going to work with hip hop because I really like hip hop too. But if I listen to hip hop, I'll be bored. If yeah. you listen to things where there's lots of stuff happening, like progressive really rock, Pink Floyd, psych- well, Pink Floyd work, psychedelic rock, um, yeah. like st- stuff where there's like all kinds of different sounds that are happening, and you know, as long as there's just a lot of stuff that's happening, like your brain will start focusing in on like, little things, like the Flaming Lips. They put a lot of like sound in their music, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, and you're just like trying to pick out like, oh, what's that little noise over here that I'm hearing? And you'll start focusing in on that stuff. And like every guitar stroke just feels like, you know, you're being brushed with a bliss brush, <laughs> just pure bliss. Uh huh. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You probably could do that yeah. with hip hop because hip hop is really repetitive. Nah. And yeah, the, and the only other thing that's happening is some guy talking on top of it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah, it's not very complex music. Yeah, and I'm not bashing it. I'm not bashing I, it. I love punk rock, and that's as basic sure. as you get, you know. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. I um, I I like it. The, my favorite thing to do is just go walking around, and that can be hard because, like, man, as you're like coming up, it's like it's been like. Like I, I always just feel this feeling of, like it's just pulling me to the ground, and uh, but it's but it's just it is still fun to walk. Like but every time you stop, I just feel like ah fuck, I'm gonna fall over. <laughs> but it's so but you're fun. not. I, I, you're not. No, no, I'm just fine. I'm just standing there. It's just you know. But uh, 
but I, it's really fun to walk around out in the the woods or the uh, the field during the day if it's nice out. That is, yeah, um, it's pretty fucking fun. But I've, I haven't uh, I haven't done it alone. Um, I, I think I I think I I, I want to do it a couple more times because if that the I still get nervous about like, ooh, what if I go too far again? <laughs> and you get lost. Get yeah, because you can, you could get lost. If I walk around Vegas, I'm, I'm not going to get lost. I mean, if, if it gets dark, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll see the big light and be like, okay, that's where the, <laughs> that's where, that's where Luxor is. <laughs> You're, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I remember. I, I know this street. I'm going. <laughs> you know, everything is on a grid, so it's kind of like New York almost. Yeah. Except yeah. not shitty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, much easier than, than running around in the trees, right? Yeah, <laughs> you're high on fucking shrimps. Uh, I haven't, I've haven't never gotten lost. So yeah. I don't know, I you don't have a either. bright light shining in the sky that's like a beacon everywhere you go. You know, you don't have that. Yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, yeah. like if we can find Luxor, I'll know where I'm at. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. All right. Man. So, when are you going to be on Thaddeus? When do you think their episode's going to come out? He said this week, um, he said it might have been, he, he said he, he was trying to do it today, but uh, I don't think it, it's happened. Uh, I haven't, I, maybe it has since we've been talking, but I don't, I don't think it'll, I don't think it's out now. It should be out this week. If, if it is, I'll link it. Cool. Let me see. Yeah, I'll, it's I'll sure probably not going to be in the MP3 ID3 tag, but I definitely mm-hmm. will put it in there post. Cool. Uh, when it comes out, let's see, unregistered. Podcast. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Let's see if he's if you're up yet. Survey says nope. Scott Horton. Is that the most recent one? That can't possibly be right. I thought the last one was the Gustavo use it. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's what I thought it was. Huh? Maybe he pinned it. That's probably what it is. I don't know. Um, he does weird stuff. He um his he archives early early episodes but he leaves a clip of the episodes in his feed Mm -hmm. so like dan carlin will just remove them and then he archives them and you have to pay for them but uh but that leaves him on there which is you know i think it's a pretty good marketing scheme i guess yeah but i like to listen to all the podcasts for free (laughs) (laughs) you're a free writer (laughs) <laughs> libertarian libertarianism uh debunked next <laughs> <laughs> so anyways where can they find more of your stuff you can find more of my stuff at uh i think it's if you look up nick hazelton you'll f- probably find the anarcho yakitalism podcast which is my old one um and then if you scroll down you'll probably find yakin with nick yakin with nick can be found at um I think it's just yakin.libsyn.com. That's J U S T Y A K K I N dot L I B S Y N. And uh, you can find all of it there. I'm on iTunes and Stitcher and, and Google Play. And um, and then Hazleton Farms. If you look up Hazleton Farms or Nick Hazleton and Yaks, you can find us there. If you're uh, local uh, in Oregon, um, definitely hit me up if you're interested in, in any yak meat. But otherwise, uh, Pay attention to me on Facebook. I'll I'll put up there when I'm ready to start. Confirmed uh, attention war. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but uh, I'll definitely be selling jerky. Um, uh, hopefully, before yes. Christmas. Week. All right, and of course, you can find all my stuff in the links. Well, actually, you know what? Uh, everything's always in the links below. Just look at the links below in the description. <laughs> I, if you excuse me. I got... <laughs>